Hi, this is Dave Spector at Evanston Space just outside of Chicago, and I'm so excited to welcome Jimmy Vaughn to Fret 12 Blues and Beyond. Jimmy, thanks, Good to for, be here. thanks for doing this, Thank man. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I was just a kid that had blues records and lived in Dallas and had big dreams that I wanted to be a blues guitar player and a musician and and uh, do all this stuff. And I I did it because I didn't know I couldn't do it. I didn't know any different. Yeah. You know, I just sure I just didn't know that I I didn't think I could do it, but I didn't think I you know there wasn't any reason just did it. Yeah. And uh, I've been so fortunate, to, I, I never dreamed in a million years that I could actually meet these people and, and get to play with them. Yeah. You know, I had uh, It's My Life Baby by Junior Wells and Buddy Guy. Uh, I had uh, uh, Live at the Copacabana, Big Bill, Sure. Uh, what was his name, Big Bill? Uh, Big Bill Hill. Big Bill Hill. And that record is still, that was the first time I heard Buddy Guy. Mm -hmm. And you know that record is wild. Yeah. And That's you know, incredible. Charlie Muswat told me he was actually there. Really? In the room when they cut it, when they recorded that at the club. Yeah. Buddy's talked about that too. Because he said that was the first that's the first recording he ever did with his own band. Is that right? Yeah. You know, about half of it is uh in the studio with right. live overdub. Yeah. But I mean I, so was BB King's uh, I had an album that was a live B.B. King album, supposedly Greatest Hits or something. Okay. Like an old one, you know, yeah. like on Kent or something, mm -hmm. or um, one of those. Yeah. And, you know, half of the songs were like overdubbed with people in the yeah. studio. I always loved that. Yeah, it's hard to believe that that Copacabana record's out of print. That is one of the greatest records yeah. ever. I'd love to hear uh, someday maybe we'll get to hear the stuff they didn't put on yeah. there. So back to Chicago, Jimmy. Okay. I know you've got some great stories about about the players here and and some of your heroes. And can you share one of those with one us? One of the times we were playing uh, the T-Birds, we got a gig at Kingston Mines or one of those places. Uh -huh. I'm not sure which one it was. Because um, we, you know, we would play anywhere we could get a gig, uh -huh. and it was very exciting to come to Chicago. And we we're playing. Um, at that place, Kingston Mines, I think it was, which that's the one, I'm not yeah. sure. I know you also used to play Biddy Mulligans. But it had a big window in the front. Yeah. And so, uh, and the stage was right there. I yeah. remember that. So we're set up, and we're waiting in there. All of a sudden, this limo pulls up. We're like, hmm, who is that? Well, it was Muddy Waters. He actually came to our gig in Chicago. Wow. And he sat in the front row, he sat just about as far as you are from me. And I'm standing there, and Muddy Waters is sitting in front of me with his <laughs> wife. Oh, man. And he sat there the whole gig. He got there before the gig. He sat down and sat there the whole gig. And when the gig was over, he said, <laughs> he said, I really enjoyed it, guys. Uh, and he got in his limousine and drove off. Oh, man. And we were like, <laughs> you know. To say that, uh, I mean, you were, you, were, you were thrilled and you were excited, but you were also nervous because Muddy Waters is yeah. sitting in front of you. Yeah. Wow. If you can imagine. So You must have been in heaven. I though. felt like a Boy Scout. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But he had a good time. and uh, mm -hmm. That's incredible. So I'll tell that story from now on because cool. it's, that's a feather. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Big one. <laughs> to talk to you about some of the younger guys on the blues scene these days. I know Gary Clark Jr. is making a big name for himself and he often talks about your influence and your friendship. You must be very proud of where Gary's at. Yeah, you know, uh, we again, we played Anton's, you know, forever and ever. Uh -huh. And Gary would come, his, his dad and his mom would bring him and he was a little kid, you know, yeah. like eight years old, I think, when he, I'm not sure how old he was when he first came, but he, you know, came for 
a lot of times, a lot of years, and, mm -hmm. and saw us play. And then, then I remember the first time he sat in, he, had a, uh, he played with Eve. They would play together because they lived next door to each other or something like mm -hmm. that. And who was Eve? Eve, uh, she now plays with the Go-Go's. Not the Go-Go's, but uh, uh, the Texas, the Blue Bonnets. Do you know who the Blue Bonnets no, are? No, I don't. Kathy Valentine from the Go-Go's mm -hmm. is from Austin. Mm -hmm. And so they all live, she lives in Austin with, uh, and she has a band there that plays around when they're not on tour with the Go-Go's. She plays at Antone's and she plays, uh, uh, and Eve plays with her I now. Okay. And she, I think Eve is also in the Go-Go's okay. when they go on tour. And Eve's been playing a long time and she's real good. She's a great player. And they, she started out, they lived next door to Gary. Got it. So they, when they were like little teenagers, they uh, played together. So they would come up to Anton's when I first saw them, they played together. And I said, hey man, you should be Adam and Eve. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't do yeah. that, but uh, I yeah. thought it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah anybody else that, that comes to mind that, that we might not uh, know about? There was Nick Curran, yeah. uh, who was a great player, who, who uh, was a kid like from Maine or something that showed up, who uh, his father turned him on to the T-Birds and, mm -hmm. and blues and all that stuff when he was a, a little kid. He was one of those little kids that always played. Yeah. And he got into blues and you know what a monster he was too. And he, yeah. he was down there. Unfortunately, he just passed away. Mm -hmm. Anton's was a lot of fun. And there was a lot of other clubs too. Sure. Before Anton's, we played, you know, anywhere yeah. and everywhere yeah. that we could. Yeah. And uh, that's, I think that's the, the best thing for people that like this kind of music, whether it's blues or jazz or, or even like old-timey kind of hard country or something. Mm -hmm. You, you got to play every night. Mm -hmm. You got to play. You got to play for people. Right. But you need to have a, go get a band and go down to the, beer joint and play every night or at least that's what we sure. got to do yeah you know in Austin and other places right. I heard about uh, the yard birds I, mean, I remember when like the British invasion came out and all that stuff and then a friend of mine called me up and his his uncle had been to London and he came back and he had this record called blues breakers he said you got to hear this guy his guitar sings, he says. Yeah. So he plays, he plays me Eric Clapton over the radio. I mean, over the phone. It was just, you know, exciting yeah. to, be, to be, you know, all young and hear all this great yeah. music coming from everywhere. Right. And now you're playing with them. And, and so I, I think in the 80s, I think after the T-Birds' first record came out, is that he hired us to go and open for him on, on a, a tour. Okay. And that's when we first... Uh, met him. I got to play with him several times and then when um, then when St Stevie got killed you know um, I was just sort of at home I didn't want to I didn't want to go out and play gigs because they're all people they all wanted to talk about how sorry they were about what had happened about Stevie and I didn't want to face it you know I didn't want to face uh, yeah all the people were being nice and they wanted to tell me you know what kind of experience they had and how much it meant for them and all this stuff. But I just, you know, I just couldn't handle it. So, so I played at home and, you know, for three or four years and didn't really play much uh, out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a few things. But, um, but then, so I get a call from Eric. He says, I want you to come up for me at the... Um, Royal Albert Hall, because he plays that thing where he plays two weeks or yeah. every night. So, you know, it's just like if Muddy Waters asks you to do something sure. or if Eric Clapp asks you to come play a gig, you don't say, you don't say no. Yeah. Because, you know, you're like, well, you may not ever ask me again. I better do it. Sure, you know? sure. 
So we went over there and I got my band together. It was George, mm -hmm. same uh, couple of the guys, Luann mm -hmm. and George, you know, were with me right there from the beginning. And you know, Luann was in the original Thunderbirds. Yeah. And so it was a lot of fun. We went to, we went to England, mm -hmm. spent all the money on the hotel. <laughs> That's okay. It was yeah. fun, yeah, and we cool. got to play every night. And uh, yeah. I think we did it a couple of times, and then we've done several tours with him. And I'm just uh, Eric, sort of, uh, you know, is sort of big brotherly to me. You know, yeah, that's great. And but so is Buddy Guy, and all those guys have been, you know, so great. I n I never dreamed in a million years that I would get to meet these guys. Yeah, much less play with them. Yeah. That's right. Jimmy, thank you so much, man. Thank it's you. My great. pleasure.